Hello and welcome to another edition of Sparky Help. This time we're looking at impedance, voltage and power triangles, as well as just refreshing ourselves on trigonometry, with some worked examples throughout. Please like, share and subscribe. So let's have a look at trigonometry first of all, just to refresh our memories of this. So we take a triangle, a right angle triangle, and we have an angle there, which we'll call theta, whatever that angle happens to be, and it's labeling the side. So the one next to the angle we call the adjacent. The diagonal, the longest side of the triangle, we call the hypotenuse. And the one opposite the angle, the other side, is called the opposite. That's nice and straightforward. So what do we have the relationship between trigonometry? So the cosine of that angle is calculated from the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The sine of that angle can be calculated as follows, opposite over hypotenuse. And then we have the tangent, which is opposite over the adjacent. So let's have a look now if we move the angle up there. So now we've moved the angle to a different location. The one that will stay the same is the hypotenuse because that's always the longest side. But the opposite and the adjacent swap sides in this particular example because the, the adjacent is always the one next to the angle itself. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side, so therefore you can identify it. And the opposite is always opposite. So as ever, let's have a little look at an example here. So we've got an angle, 36 degrees. And we know this one is called the adjacent. And the hypotenuse will give it a, a length of 6 centimetres. And we may want to find out the opposite. So we have a choice of formulas that we could use. So let's have a look at finding the adjacent first. So we need to find a formula that has got hypotenuse and adjacent in it. And the only one that does that is the cosine one. So let's have a look at that by rearranging this. OK, so basically the hypotenuse goes up, becomes a multiply. So adjacent equals cosine of the angle times by the hypotenuse. So if we put that in, the cosine of 36 times 6, and that gives us that length of 4.85 centimetres. And I've rounded up there. Now we want to find the opposite. And for that, well, we've got a choice, more of a choice now, because we now know two sides. But what we'll use, we'll use the sine. So to find the sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse becomes a multiply again. So we know the angle, so we put the sine of 36 multiplied by the hypotenuse, which in this case is 6. And that gives us a value of 3.53 centimetres. We could have used the tangent, and it would have been the tangent multiplied by the adjacent. So that would have been the tan of 36 times 4.85. That would have also given it, but it, it's your choice. It's whichever one you can remember on the day. So hopefully that's nice and straightforward, and you can rearrange those relatively simply, because it's a straightforward rearrangement. So we've now answered all of those sides. Now let's have a look at and refresh our memory of Pythagoras. Pythagoras, hopefully most people remember this one, at least they've heard of him. OK, and what he said, if we call the sides A, B and C, and what he found was on a right angle triangle, if you have the square of this side and the square of this side, and if you add those two squares together, it always on a right angle triangle will equal the square of the hypotenuse. That is a formula I'm sure you've probably all seen before. That becomes c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But it's not often we want the square of another side, we want the size or the length of that side. So the way to do that, to get rid of a square, the opposite to a square is a square root. So we have to square root the opposite side. So now hopefully this is a more familiar formula that you may well have seen. So the c, to find that, is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now let's get on to the focus of what we're looking at. 
impedance triangles, voltage triangles and power triangles. So again, we're going to start with the right, an right angle triangle, which is you can see why we started off just refreshing our memory of this. So it's always a right angle triangle. And for an impedance triangle, R is always the horizontal because resistance is in phase. Z is the combination of everything, so it's the sum of the other two sides, so that's always the hypotenuse. And then this side is the reactive side, so this is either XL or XC or a combination, but this is the X. Now, if we multiply each of these sides by a current, we will get another triangle. And if we multiply I times R, we get volts. So this is a voltage triangle. So if we multiply each of those sides, I times R gives you the voltage across a resistor. So it gives you VR. If we do I times Z, Z is the total. So I times the total gives us VS. And if we multiply I by X, we get VX. So the voltage across the reactive part of a circuit. And now we've got to do is do another triangle. So we're going to multiply each side by I again. And we'll get an identical triangle. So another right angle triangle. So here's the common theme here. And if we do I times R, well, R is the bit that does all the work. That's the bit that uses power. So this is a power triangle. And what you will get at that point there along the horizontal in phase is watts. And if we do I times VS, if the circuit has a power factor, then you'll get VA, which is apparent power. That leaves us one more side to do. I times VX gives us VAR. That's the volt amps reactive power. So hopefully you can see the relationship between the three triangles. You can't intermatch inter them, so they have to be independent of each other, but they are all related. Let's go back and look at this then. So we've got an angle here. What does that relate to? It's the power factor and power factor is the cosine of an angle. And we have the same angle on this one. This is also going to be the power factor and it's the cosine of the angle. And guess what? You guessed it. The last one also power factor. That is the cosine of the angle. How do we work those out? We'll go back to the first one again. It's adjacent over hypotenuse because it's a cosine. So in this case, as people tend to remember it, it's R over Z. This would be my go to. This is the one I tend to remember most of the time. And that's the one I'm always looking for. Weird how students, when you say we're going to do work out the power factor, they'll go straight into R over Z. If I had mentioned that we're doing trigonometry, suddenly everyone switches off because they think back to their school days and all those things that you did in maths. And you think, what's the point? Well, here's the point. You're now using it. But if we don't call it trigonometry, we just call it power factor. What you are doing is the same thing. Hopefully, it's what you can now see. And then we can apply that to this one on here. So it's VR over VS. That gives us the power factor. And the last one, it would be watts over VA. So all of these formulas for each of these will give you the power factor for a circuit if you know those two. If we look, then we can apply. Pythagoras to all of these, and there we've got z is equal to the square root of r squared plus x squared. Look familiar? I hope so, because this is the formula for z. It could be xl or xc or both. Remember, one would subtract from the other. And we can apply that also to the voltage. So vs is equal to the square root of vr squared plus vx squared, which remember xl or xc. And therefore, you've guessed it again, the power one can be calculated as such. So hopefully you can see the relationship and usefulness of remembering these three power triangles. But let's put them into practice again. What can we actually apply them to? So let's put some numbers in and again, I'm going to keep the math simple. So there we've got R is four, X is three. And we can work out the other side. So we can apply Pythagoras. So R squared plus X squared. It's a three, four, five triangle. So it becomes five ohms. So Z is five. If we multiply each side by 10 as a current, just to give, make again to make the math simple, 
we can apply this to and work out what the voltage triangle would be. So 10 times 4 is 40, 10 times 3, 30, and obviously we could look at it and 10 times 5 would be 50, but we're going to apply it as a Pythagoras, pretend you didn't know the 5 ohms, and it would be VR squared plus VX squared. This would be proving Kirchhoff's voltage law ultimately. And there we have it, 50 volts. Again, we can multiply each side by 10 again, and we can get a power triangle. If we do 10 times 40, you will get the watts. So this circuit, whatever this circuit is, it has 400 watts of power. We can work out the VAR, because it's 10 times 30. So it has 300 VAR, so the reactive power. We can work out the VA, we can apply 10 times 50, so we know it's going to be 500, but we can do Pythagoras again, the watt squared plus VAR squared, and square root for answer, and it's ultimately all of these are three, four, five triangles. So there we have it, 500 VA for this particular circuit, all looking at the same triangle. At least one thing left to look at, power factor. So let's go back on this one. And to find the power factor, which is the cosine of the angle, it becomes r over z. So that becomes 4 divided by 5, gives us a power factor of 0.8. We can also work out the power factor in the voltage triangle, if that's all you had, which is going to be the same, but it's time it's going to be vr over vs. Remember, all of this is adjacent over hypotenuse. And that will also be 0.8. Again, you've guessed it. We can apply that again to the power one. Power factor is the cosine of the angle, and it's watts over VA. And there we have it, 400 over 500 is still going to be 0.8. So we've got the power factor for each of those three power triangles. Let's have a look at this as an example then, as could be a typical type question. We have a 10 kilowatt load with a power factor of 0.75. And we want to be able to draw and label and find the sides of a power triangle. So we can do this by a graphical method. So what we need to do is we need to select a scale on, and have a ruler and a protractor to hand. And basically we're going to draw the power first of all, because that's what we've been given, and it's 10 kilowatts. So I'm going to use one centimetre equals one kilowatt, and we're going to draw a line. Horizontal, remember, because it's the kilowatts. What I then need to do is find the angle. To find the angle, we do the cosine to the minus one of the particular power factor that we have. So cos to the minus one of 0 0.75 gives us an angle of 41.4 degrees. And we can put our protractor on, and we can basically, what we need to do is construct a right angle triangle through the 41.14 degrees, as accurate as you possibly can. So the bigger you make this, the more accurate it will be. If you make it really tiny, you're not going to be that accurate. So remember, it's a right angle triangle, so that's what we're going to construct. So we just draw some lines through the 41 degrees, right angle on the right hand side there, and then obviously where the two points meet, that will then construct your triangle. So we can now measure those sides if we could draw it to scale. So we get a ruler out, put it on the edge there, and measure it up there. And we get 13.3. So we've got our measurement. That, remember, is 1 centimetre equals 1k. So that's 13.3 kVA. And we can now measure the vertical part. Remember, this is the VAR. And there we've got it. So it's 8 up to that point. And it's approximately 8.8 .8 kVAR. Like I say, the more accurate you can draw it, the more accurate you will actually be. But you'll be there or thereabouts. Is this really spot on? Well, we'll have a look in a moment. So therefore, we have now constructed the power triangle based on this information. And I hope you can see it's quite straightforward. Now, let's have a look at doing it by calculation. So it still asks us to draw and label the sides of the power triangle but also find the values. But this time, obviously, we're going to, got to still draw it, but we can actually find the sides by calculation method. So there's the power, goes across the bottom. Because we're just doing a sketch, we can just label that. We can work out the angle again, as if we didn't know it. So that's cos to the minus 1 of the point of the power factor. So cos to the minus 1, 0 0.75. 
that gives us an angle of 41.4. We just draw a right angle triangle. We know we can put the angle in at 41.4 because we've had to work that one out. Draw the lines and then we call this S. So S equals the KVA. S is the apparent power. P is power in watts. S is volt amps, the apparent power. And we can draw the other side. And I don't know why, but it's Q is what they tend to be referred to. So for those people on courses where you know it as the, these letters, then Q is the reactive power, KVAR. So we've labelled the sides and constructed a power triangle. What we now need to do is work out what the sides are, but we're going to do it by calculation. So remember, the drawing now doesn't have to be to scale. It's just a sketch, but labelled. So to do that, to work out the KVA, it's rearranging the cosine. Basically, it becomes kilowatts divided by power factor. So that becomes 10 divided by 0.75. So we don't do anything to that. We just put it in as that. And that gives us 13.3 KVA. So we've just answered that side. So we know what that one is. We could use sine of the angle like we did on the very early part of this video. But I'm going to use Pythagoras and that will be a rearrangement of that. So to find KVAR, it is the KVA squared minus the kilowatt squared. Well, we know the KVA, it is 13.3 squared minus 10 squared. And then we square root the answer and that gives us an answer of 8.76 KVAR which is not bad. By our measurement, we were roughly about 8.8. .8, so I was reasonably close and pretty much bang on with the KVA. So as you can see, hopefully there are two methods. One is calculation. One is drawing. Either are acceptable. I hope that's been helpful. This is Sparky Help. Thank you very much.